Welcome to the Dr. April Jasper Show, relevant conversations for business owners of today. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. We appreciate being a part of your life and being invited into your day. It is such a joy to be able to help our colleagues to bring value to their patients and to help you strengthen and grow your business. Join us at optometricmanagementeducation.com where you can learn more about all of the other services we provide. We have a subscription service that you can be a part of where you can learn and teach your team from the courses that we've recorded on all of the topics that are relevant to your success. We also have consulting services. And right now, if you give us a call, schedule a call with me, I'll be happy to talk to you about what we can do to help you grow your business one-on-one. We are so excited to be back again. We are talking about a topic that I think that everyone really is going to feel is very uh, relevant right now, David, and that is 10 ways to recession-proof your practice. So in the last three episodes, we've already done three of the 10 ways. And uh, the three were, let's walk through them. They were number one, create your practice of distinction. And even though it's a long, uh, long conversation with a book on its way that talks about it, we broke it down into what, 15 minutes, I think. (laughs) And then uh, the next one was always putting patients first which seems very ordinary, but we talked about how sometimes that doesn't happen in in, uh, doctor's offices. Yep, definitely not. And then the third one we've done so far is how we need to spend time on one of the most important areas of our business for many of us, which is our optical. You know, I don't think we told everybody, but when you look at our space, David, what is the breakdown, you know these answers better than I do, of space that we have given to our optical as opposed to the rest of the practice? We're probably about 35% square footage wise, optical yeah, to 65 Exam lanes, business office, restrooms, that kind of thing. How do you feel about that now? Do you feel like that's enough space? We could have more if we ever build another practice, which one day. (laughs) Yeah, which probably soon. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I think right now we're we're pretty good. I think we had to go with what we were moving into, obviously. So, and we kind of used existing restrooms when we built out our space. Right. So I think, yeah, there's definitely room. We need more room for ad- admin. We definitely need more admin room. We could use a bigger kitchen kind of thing, space for staff. And so, I mean, yeah, there's definitely changes we could make, but for what we have, it's, it's a great, it's a great layout. I think we, I think we have a great layout as far as function. Yeah. Do you feel like the optical is big enough then? I think so. It could be probably a little bigger because people do st- tend to step on each other and maybe space out where they're selling. Um, that way you're, there's not so many conversations on top of each other. Right. In my mind. But then yeah. again, how do you really do that in an open space anyways? I don't really know. I'd have to go and look at more sure. opticals. Well, and it's interesting because if you look at other businesses, look clothing industry, if you went to shop for golf clubs, right? if you went to shop for anything in a uh, brick and mortar establishment, yeah. they're all pretty much set up the same. They are. The only difference is that with, so yeah, the only difference is with us is you have copay issues, you have personal right. insurance issues, right. you have all this stuff that you're always discussing with the patient. And that's just kind of, yeah, that can be very uncomfortable at times, especially I when know. somebody feels like you tried to sell them something and it's their insurance or whatever. Sure. And everybody's listening to that conversation. Right. That's very, yeah. So but there's I, not really any way to get around that. I don't think, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet, but I, again, like you said, we visited hundreds of offices and we haven't seen anyone who's set it up different, but I think that is definitely the benefit of having more space. Hmm. And so if you're just now building, I would think about it because the point I was going to get to is just that the optical is such an important part of your business. I would definitely do what you can to innovate and come up with new ideas to be able to do a better job there because you're right, Dave, it is important to make each encounter personal. And we find ways to do that that don't have anything to do with having a separate closed room. But at the same time, I think we can continue to improve. So now we move to number four. And number four is utilize the latest in contact lens technology. So David pays the bills. I've told you guys that before. It doesn't mean I don't see the numbers. I actually do. I have a dashboard that I look at every single day to see how we're doing and multiple times a day, it depends on the day. 
and it updates on uh, immediately. So mm-hmm. as soon as we have a sale or as soon as money is coming in, it updates on a regular basis so we can see how we're doing. And it's not because the business is all about money, but it's because the business has to function in a way that is profitable for us to continue to bless more people and to provide value to more people. Yeah, absolutely. So the money matters. And yep. since you're the one paying the bills, do we spend a lot? Don't tell people numbers, but do we spend a lot on contact lenses in our practice? Yes, we do. We spend a <laughs> lot of money on contact lenses. Our cost of goods, yes. So do we make any money with contact lenses? Would you say there's any profit in it without giving us numbers? Is it profitable? Yes. To... Okay. Yes, absolutely. All right, you got the answer to this. It's hard. I mean, that's as far as our cost of goods. Yeah, the the percentage of contact lens in our cost of goods section, it's a significant amount of our cost of goods. Right. And that's not good or bad, right? Because you want to be selling frames and lenses also, which we do. If you suffer from dry, scratchy, irritated eyes, the problem may actually stem from your eyelids. Cleansing eyelids daily is essential for maintaining healthy eyes which is why doctors recommend OcuSoft Lid Scrub Allergy Eyelid Cleanser. New OcuSoft Lid Scrub Allergy removes oil, pollen, and other contaminants from your eyelids to effectively reduce redness, irritation, and itching caused by seasonal allergies. These pre-moistened wipes are easy to use, on the go, or at home. Simply wipe and leave on. As the industry standard of care, OcuSoft has a full line of eyelid cleansers for various conditions. Available through eye care professionals, most retail outlets, and Amazon.com. Visit OcuSoft.com for more details. You know. Yeah, so the reason uh, that this makes the list and the reason that it is number four on the list, and I don't know that these are ranked in an order of importance mm-hmm. necessarily, although number one really should have stayed at the top, which yep. is you have to have that, that basis for what your practice is. Right. But the reason that contact lenses make it in this list is because what we have found over time is that patients love contact lenses. I love my contacts. I know yep. David's waiting for the day when I will put him in his, and we'll tell that story another day. But contact lenses are <laughs> not such, that you haven't tried. <laughs> contact lenses are such an important part of our practice, and part of the reason for that is that. When you wear contact lenses, it gives you the freedom to be able to do many more things in your day. And a Mm -hmm. lot of our patients don't wear them all the time. They want them for occasional use. And I think that the biggest challenge I saw early on in my career is that we didn't put enough emphasis in understanding the options that were available in contacts and knowing how to actually be successful with those patients. David, you had a chance to look at some reviews. Do you ever see any of our reviews that comment on contact lenses? Yeah, there's absolutely there's people that comment about them uh, as far as comfort, ease of getting them in and out. Definitely. Right. And so, you know, even patients tell us in the reviews it makes a difference. All right, so let's break down contact lenses. The most important thing, and people have asked me before, if you had one thing you could do in a brand new practice that would be able to help you build that practice, what would it be? And the one of the one of the ones that makes it to the top of the list every time is to put more patients into daily disposable contacts. So daily disposable contacts, our listeners are mostly eye doctors and eye care professionals, but for anyone else who's listening, daily disposable contact lenses are the kind you put in in the morning and you take out at night and you throw them in the garbage. Yep. And the reason we believe in them is because they are healthier. They allow you to have a fresh new lens every day. And I tell patients all the time, you're not carrying around whatever you were exposed to yesterday, again tomorrow. And then I think uh, one of our favorite uh, pictures was actually uh, something that was on the Centers for Disease Control years ago. And it said, um, contact lenses, uh, oh man, I got to think of it. How did it describe it? It said, replace your contact lens solution every night, just like you replace your underwear. And I remember (laughs) thinking how crazy it was because that was in the day (laughs) That contact lenses were mostly reusable. And so the big push back then was don't reuse your contact lens solution. Well, I love that now what we are telling our patients is how important it is to be able to throw the lenses away and start fresh the next day. So I guess the the main focus for us still has been daily disposable wear. And the reason for that as a practice builder is because patients like them. 
Patients find that they work really well. They're more comfortable. They give them great vision. They're convenient. They travel well. Yep. But it also, as a business, I'm happy for that because my patients don't complain. No, they love them. They don't not complain. They d- they love those lenses. And they're compliant, which right. means they do what they're supposed to do. Yep. They don't try to cheat and wear the lenses over and to harm their eyes. Mm-hmm. They know that this is the best thing for them. Right. And they come back in in a year like they're supposed to, to yep. be able to make sure their eyes are healthy. Yep. That's the other thing I think is interesting. Patients will often say, how do you know a year is enough? Like, should I come in sooner? Should I come in later? And everybody's different. There are patients right. we have come in at six months. Yep. But most of the time, a year, a yearly annual, so what I call it is an annual eye health evaluation is adequate to make sure that nothing shows up or nothing happens in that space of time that could be harmful right. to your eyes or your vision. Yep. All right. So daily disposables. Now my next favorite could be because I am over 50. So I am a presbyope. And uh, so my next favorite are multifocals. David hears me talk about them all the time. That's what you want one day. And that's uh, why I'm wearing my glasses. Exactly. And so the benefit of a multifocal is that you can see distance and near. If I didn't tell you I was over 50, my eyes wouldn't be the story that you would be seeing it from. And it's interesting because I had a patient come in just last week and she said, you know, I have access to all these different things in my life that I can wear, use, such as products and, uh, you know, different hairstyles, different things she can do to look and feel young. But when you have to wear reading glasses it kind of takes that all away. And she said, and that these were her words. She yeah. says, can you please yeah. help me with something that will make me feel like I'm young again, even when I, it comes to my vision and my eyes. Right. So we put her in multifocal lenses and she was thrilled, went out with the lenses that day. That's mm-hmm. the other nice thing is yep. now we have technology that we can give them the same day. Oh yeah. But I will tell you, multifocal, daily disposable contact lenses have built our practice. They are phenomenal. Yeah, it's all in stock. We keep it all in the practice. And it's not just because it's great for the practice. The reason we love them is because our patients are consistently and continuously wowed Mm -hmm. by the fact that they can wear a contact lens that's comfortable and allows them to see clearly from morning till night. Mm Mm-hmm whether looking at the movie screen or the menu. Yep. We are excited to have Cooper Vision as a sponsor of our podcast. Cooper Vision is one of the world's leading contact lens manufacturers, and they serve eye care professionals and patients in over 130 countries. Their innovative products help millions of patients see every single day. One of the technologies and innovations that we love the most about Cooper Vision is their groundbreaking technology in soft contact lenses that helps to slow the progression of myopia in children eight to 12 years old at the initiation of treatment. All right, so multifocals, daily disposables, now we get to astigmatism. So have you heard me, David's heard me explain this a few times. Oh yeah. What do you think, what, what explanation do you like the best I'm not even sure. So the one I think, uh, the one I tend to use the best to explain astigmatism is that your eye is shaped more oval than round, more like an egg than a baseball. And most people know baseball. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows eggs. We just talked about the price has, what, quadrupled in the last uh, two months. Uh, But anyway, uh, without getting too distracted. Yeah. Astigmatism in the past has been something that has not had a whole lot of options for contact lens, and that has been a challenge for every doctor and every patient. Mm -hmm. But in just the last three months even, we have had a huge amount of technology, new innovation in lenses that correct astigmatism Yep. to where now those patients can see just as clearly with their contacts as patients that don't. I'm ready. Yeah, so it it is a great day to uh, be a patient that needs glasses or contacts. It is a great time to be able to have access to those in our practice. Mm-hmm. But it goes back to why this makes one of the f- one of the ten. So number four yep. in the ten ways to recession proof your practice, and that is if you know, if we're the practice that knows about the latest technology, even in contact lenses then we're the practice that's going to better be able to solve our patients' problems. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we definitely know about 
our goals for our practice. We want to be able to solve our patients' problems and we want to be able to do it efficiently. Yep. We want to be able to be accurate in everything we do and we want them to share with others yeah. all about it. Absolutely. That's one thing I think too that you have to think about when you're recession proofing your practice is how to keep the patients that you currently have in your practice right. from leaving your practice. Yeah. That's huge. Yep. And hopefully we have, like I said, we keep that stuff. So that's something that we can do in-house, right? We keep that in-house. We keep, all, we, we keep most every lens that we will need for a patient right. to get them started in the practice. Whereas lenses in the frames are harder to do. And right. Yeah. It's not, they're not turnaround so immediately. Instant gratification. Correct. Basically, almost every time, I would say 99% of the patients that come in, we have what they need in the practice. Right. So if somebody comes in and wants to get contact lenses, we, we know that it's going to be there and we know that it's going to work. Yep. So we talk about it to everybody and we use a questionnaire, which we'll talk about again in the next episode. That is really only eight questions, but those eight questions are really important in helping us to be able to direct the conversation and then for us to be able to solve our patients' needs. And if we don't know what their problems are, it's very difficult to get to that place where we can solve them. Right. One thing, though, I think is interesting, and before we end this episode for us to, to chat about, is the fact that there are many times people don't know what they want or mm. need until yep. we tell them what their options are, because right. you wouldn't know. And, and that's the thing that happens a lot of times is patients come into the practice and they don't realize that we could put them in contact lenses. Well, that's what makes you the problem solver, right? That's what optometrists are. That's what the yeah. office, that's what... OD offices are all about. It's finding out what they need. Right. And if you're not going to pay attention to that, then yeah. and the you're going to have a hard time does. making people happy. Right. So when, when we build the website, we try to have information on there that directs them to ask that question. Mm -hmm. We try to make sure everyone on our team knows that we have those options. Right. We keep those contact lenses updated. So we have it available whenever the patients come in. And then the other thing that we try to do is we try to really make sure we talk about it on the phone. So when a patient calls for an appointment, we don't ask them if they're coming in for glasses or contacts. We ask them if they're making an appointment for glasses and contacts. And we start right there letting them know that we believe you do have an opportunity to wear them. We believe that we do have something that we can help you with. And we talk about it with yep. them. So on number four of the 10 ways to recession-proof your practice, don't forget to utilize the latest in contact lens technology for your patients and make sure we talk about it so they know that it's an option for them. <laughs> <laughs>